Archaeologists have long told tales of brilliant foreign explorers uncovering the secrets of pharaohs. But the country is infuriated that Egyptians have been written out of the historical narrative. Ancient excavators say Egyptians did all the work, but were forgotten. They are now demanding that their contributions be recognized. In our a report. This golden sarcophagus of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun, who reigned between 1342 to 1325 BC, is on display in this burial chamber at the underground tomb in the Valley of the Kings, in Egypt's southern city of Luxor. Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, is believed to have discovered the intact tomb of the 18th dynasty pharaoh Tutankhamun on November of 1922. This is called the best preserved pharaonic tomb ever found in the Valley of the Kings. Flush with tales of brilliant foreign explorers uncovering the secrets of the pharaohs, Egyptians claim they have been relegated to the background. And now, ahead of the 100th anniversary of Carter's earth-shattering discovery, Egyptians are demanding that their contributions to the discoveries be recognized. According to specialist researcher Heba Abdul Gawad, even Egyptology's colonial era birth set neatly at Frenchman Jean Francois Champollion cracking the Rosetta Stone's code in 1822 whitewashes history. <laughs> Those who documented the old Egyptian civilizations are foreigners, so we should understand that the writings were during the time of colonization and racism. That's why there is a kind of so-called whitewashing by creating a historic white narrative. Many specialists believe Egyptians remain unnoticed, unnamed and virtually unseen in their own history. But one Egyptian name did gain fame as the tomb's supposed accidental discoverer, Hussein Abdul Rizaul. Despite not appearing in Carter's diaries and journals, the tale of the water boy is presented as historic fact. On November 4th of 1922, a 12-year-old commonly believed to be Hussein found the top step down to the tomb, supposedly because he either tripped, his donkey stumbled or because his water jug washed away the sand. The next day, Carter's team exposed the whole staircase and on November 26th, he peered into a room filled with golden treasures through a small breach in the tomb door. Local farmers who knew the contours of the land could tell from the layers of sediment whether there was something there. Profound knowledge and skill at excavating had been passed down for generations in Kurna. Mustafa Abdul Sadak, a chief excavator of the Saqqara tombs near Giza, whose discoveries have been celebrated in the Netflix documentary series Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb, is a descendant of those diggers at Kift. His family moved 600 kilometers north at the turn of the 20th century to excavate the vast necropolis south of the Giza pyramids. Mustafa says his grandfathers and great uncles were wronged. However, few Egyptologists do not share the same view. There may have been certain behaviors which we may now describe as colonialism or consider wrong. But we can't generalize without good scientific research for at least five years at this point. While the contents of Tutankhamun's tomb stayed in Cairo, Egypt lost Carter's archives which were considered his private property. The records key to academic research were donated by his niece to the Griffith Institute for Egyptology at Britain's Oxford University. Unfortunately, until today, not only are the stolen antiquities in European museums, but also the production of knowledge on ancient Egypt, it is still limited to the Western academia circles. Over the centuries, countless antiquities made their way out of Egypt, some like the Luxor Obelisk in Paris and the Temple of Debord in Madrid. These were gifts from the Egyptian government. Others were lost to European museums through the colonial era apartheid system. Now, after 200 years of deciphering of the Rosetta Stone, Egyptians are bidding to reclaim their history. Bureau Report, World of Africa, Vion, World is One.